G2, huge question marks here as they fight for survival, as you say. Two BO3s to be won today to get that final spot in the spot egg here in Group B. And Monty putting up a hell of a fight to keep this game going after the demolishing loss on Nuke. Flash play out through B main. Kras now here on the dualies, but they're ahead of that flash. And so Monacy starts this strong. You're going to need big numbers out of this guy. And that's the start you want. Two kills from him in the pistol. G2, a much needed leg up after getting a rough hand dealt to them back on Vertigo. They're immediately a presence within the server here, locking Monty out of the pistol. With no hope in this round, there's nothing left to do but wait for the next, for that eventual force buy from the Monty squad. I was going to say, you can't even land on your feet and start to get you know, warmed into this map. Monty will bring heat in round two. It's been a consistency of their CT side second rounds. Screams to the difficulty they've had on these defensive pistol rounds, but Anubis, after all, is T-sided more so than any other map in the pool right now. So G2... Get to dictate the pace at the start of this decider. Don't let them breathe. Don't let them breathe. Taz fighting to get back in the spotic as well. After lifting the trophy 10 years prior. Where teammates fighting in the same side of the bracket in snacks. And even his coach back in the day, Cuban, already qualified with ends. History on the line here for G2. Monty had that force by. It was an inevitability. And look at the stack. It doesn't push out through B main. Hunter tries to kind of contain it, tries to kind of try, tries to control it, but can't manage it. Three on three. Monty able to reel in G2 for a moment. Sam Dae Young's got this fight in middle and he's just toying with Nico, but can't finish the job. Double push out through Dark is spotted by Hooksy. Lovely info to go off of here. I thought next it would go take space, but instead he's going to come back and assist, try and get this bomb out through the rugs. Nico is very low, so next to coming back is a requirement. And with Demka dead, the danger may be dodged, maybe navigated as Nico drives the Galil through the back of Bro. It's a well-contained second round from G2 after a bit of a rough patch to start it on that B main push. A slight sigh of relief, but the tension will never really disappear in this game for G2. They will not feel comfortable, feel accomplished until this one is locked up and Monty are eliminated from the competition. But as we've already learned from Monty in the last year gone by, they never really stop fighting, do they? Very emotional team. But that can work to their betterment as well. Not when you get in one tap by Monacy. Deagle dead immediately. Bro will have his time to shine, but Hooksy's getting closer. Another B stack for Monty. They block. G2, it's only a MAC-10. They can risk it. A lot of pressure on Hooksy's leading into this game because we're going to see Monty pull up these stacks, play very mobile, try and hit the right gambles. If they do, they really pay off on CT side. And so Hooksy, who I would say called a phenomenal game back on Nuke, the absolute inverse on Vertigo, looked completely lost towards the end of their T side. Some explosive rushes through smokes, so many dry rounds where they didn't make use of their util. It was an ugly half. Yeah, you know, and I think even on even on terms of the util not coming out for G2, that isn't, you know, a responsibility solely for Hooksy to bear. It felt like the, the wheels came off the wagon for everyone there on the G2 ranks. And so they've got to be well drilled here. No excuses. This one looking to get put to rest nice and cleanly. You're not worried, especially not with the back line being held. Hunter floating around at the T-stairs. As Monty just play to contain, play for damage. They hold on to the extremities here, seeing if they can catch anyone from the G2 ranks unawares. And Hunter is a prime candidate for that, but he's aware of these timings on middle, goes back goes hunting for these pistols 
Only good for the first, so a bit of damage done, but in comes Monacy to regain that control and deny the save of that gun. Dropped up at the T-stairs, Monacy, prime start to this game. Six kills deep already. He's delivered a masterclass for G2 to open up their run in the groups, and he might need to do that again. There's gonna be a lot of eyes on this young gun from the G2 ranks, and justifiably so. He's been a terrifyingly consistent piece of Hooksy's arsenal for this G2 squad. He is throwing punches, no doubt about that. Was the only player performing on day one for G2. It was enough to drag them through a series against Heroic. But we will need more than just one man in this third map. Especially on an Anubis T side where you are going to be doing a lot of defaulting, spreading out. CTs will be aggressive. You're going to get flash pushed. Monty pretty reserved at the start of this map. Give it time. Breaking a main. Nexa looks for that kill and he'll go to trade his captain. Not even needed with that deep smoke. Demka locked in a coffin. SDY given a chance, but he won't take it. Hooks he's able to cross behind the pillar. Pressure on mid as well as the bomb moves through. This is the real hit for G2. They're going to go split back towards water. Take that A main control. The spam goes both ways. This is A. They've sat in the site the entire time, and Monty are getting closer. As Sam Dayong hears these footsteps, so the illusion that this ever could have been a fake is now out the window. Monty now aware that it's the A site, the objective desire for G2. Pushed off the angle, having to run back through the molly. Not ideal for Sundar Young. He's now out of position. This leaves two players in through the heavens, and Bro was tagged up earlier on. He is wounded. He is hurting. And Hunter looks to make a move. Is it the save from Monty? I They're like very locked out, and this is their first rifle round. So leaving this one to the wayside, they focus instead on the next. I like this save for Monty, but what I don't like is I feel like they look extremely cautious in this round, maybe too cautious, right? SDY given chances to fight Hooksy on that A hit. They knew he was very low. That call would have been made by Demka onto the MAC-10, who did a lot of damage, but Monty never really commit to any duels. And, you know, in the back of your mind, you're thinking about saving. Sure, G2 took a long time to actually split that A site, get the bomb back from middle to A. But it felt like if Monty went for fights earlier in the round, they would have had a 4v4, they would have had a chance to go play, but their heart was never really in that retake. Mario, alternatively to winning the round, they keep four alive, they can rebuy, they can go again, but it never felt like Monty wanted, Monty wanted to actually fight for that first buy. I'm really liking what we're getting out of Taz here. He's got great awareness of what the squad need right now. They need that confidence, and they need to feel like he's got faith in them. He doesn't look stressed. He is just exuding confidence behind the G2 squad, not even weighing in during this Monty tack pause. He's got full faith in letting them ride on this momentum. You're going to see him hyping up the team, stood behind them. And his little touches of reassurance, the yelling, telling them to stay focused, stay in it. And not let Monty breathe, I think, were the words G2 have certainly delivered on that to open up. But thanks to the save, Monty afforded another buy. And so that's why we see the pause come out. I want to see Monty go back to the plays that we know they can make on this map, the aggression in the mid round. To take some control away from G2, make them sweat. It's very standard to start. They get smoked dark and they were looking for the pick down there with two players. G2 pressure in middle. No one even here. Monty are gambling in their bomb sites right now. They'll have to give this one some consideration as they hear the util land. They aggress elsewhere. Flash through the smoke. It goes for it. What a send. And Demka, back to back, is dead. Monty can't afford to just save every round. They have to contend for this one. SDY knows he's on the timer. They're splitting him yet again. G2 actually pause for a moment. They go back. They check the flank. They make sure that Monty haven't boxed them in. And right now, Monty are still split. Two per sight. G2 actually pull this one back to a B hit. It's not a bad call. Monty aren't even in B. They're playing towards the CT side. So even well-placed utility for G2 could win them the round, but they don't have any more smokes. It's all on the fights. 
Krasnal and Bro fighting back to back over towards the spawn. They're, they're kind of on top of each other here. And you can see Krasnal wanted to try and get that space further forward, wanted to try and push through. Oh. But the Molly denies it. And so already for Monty, this Save one it. should be a done deal. They can't justify this. They didn't justify the 4v5 in the round prior. So how do you justify the 3v5? And this is a great example of why Anubis can feel so hard and so suffocating to play on those CT sides. In 5v5s, let alone 5v4s, right? Both rounds that Demka gets picked in main. You know, that's why you see teams take B long and get that space back. Because not only can you find a bomb on one of these very common splits, but you get more control. You get a better position to deny the plant. If G2 don't even have long B control, even if they have the site, they're stuck between a crossfire from the CT spawn and long B. Monty need more space in these mid rounds or they will be left saving again, again, and again. Waro is going to get his kill, but they are coming for this one. They want that all out of his hands and he is dead from the mid side. A hugely impactful hunt here for G2 as they take out two of the three remaining players. Monty have nothing to rely on. Look at that little extra bit of attention for Nexa. I think he is really benefiting from this much needed confidence boost because he's played so aggressive in these last few rounds and he's been finding great impact from these main pushes. These are not the plays that you would often associate with him looking to make through these smokes, these aggro pushes. But it's working wonders for G2. Yeah, and luckily enough, this previous save for Monty means they have a little more in the coffers. They can buy again. But it feels like Nuke in the sense that they need to start now. They can't wait forever. They can't keep holding on to guns or trying to. G2 are coming for the throat. Oh, it's great, Molly. Spreads just enough. SDY, desperate escape. And they're going to deny it. Hunter hungry and picks up that initial kill. A stone cold start for some die young, who once again, akin to all these other maps so far, started off 0 and 5 here. A rough beginning for a frequent star of the Monty squad. And so a man down already at this moment. Feels like players have got to be made. Info has to be gained. Someone has to be that hero figure for the rest of Monty to rally behind. CG2, they are tightening the net right now. The rope around Monty's throat here into this A site. The yellow dots getting closer and closer to Demko. He plays passive for once. He's going to get some damage off the next one. He's down on ammo and he's dead in the smoke. Hunter comes through from the mid side. G2 yet again win a round off of a kill or two. And that is all it takes. They are so constricting on this T half right now. Monty really cannot breathe. I mean, they set the precedent very early on in their first rifle round that they were going to play conservatively, that they were going to play safe, and that they would look better for it in the long run. But that second part is yet to materialize. And so now you have a team that started this game playing on the safer side of things, on the scareder side of things. So how are they going to build that confidence back up? It's got to come from somewhere. But right now, there's been nothing in this for Monty. And even at the end, these hunts are constantly getting punished. Ouch. G2 are really trying to deliver on that punish of never giving them room to breathe. Let's Two go. guns saved out of the round. Good job. And this is where those championship level teams like G2 should be showing their metal, should be showing a better mentality. It's been something that G2 has struggled with in the past. But in these games, even though the pressure is on them, they are the favorite. They are the big names. And they have to perform. G2 are doing that right now. And Monty, they may have scrapped their way to this lower bracket, but this could be it if they don't wake up very soon. I mean, they're already burning through these timeouts and justifiably so, but, but you wonder, you know, what can, what can LBT say down the line to, to, to bring them back into the fold. Really, they, they need that one round where they kind of stifle G2. They deny one of these openers. And from there, you can look to see Monty pick up. But as long as we keep having G2 finding success at the start of these rounds, riding that confidence, having Taz in their back line, just cheering them on. Mm.
There's not going to be an easy route to stop a G2 like this. This is a great round to limit test, to make a risky play, right? It's a half buy. They still have an orb and an M4, but they can still buy next whatever happens, even in worst case scenario. So let's see if Monty makes some moves. Let's see if they flash a peek. Demka 0 and 5 from A main to A site. Zero impact. And look, as has often been the case, Nexa is, is begging, please set me up. I've had nothing but successes over here towards main. Even there, gets double naded, but he's a little slower on the push. That at least denies the real estate, and that's something the G2 have often had as a guarantee. So this time, they're held back from A main. Is that going to be enough to uproot the G2 game plan? Or will it just force them to delve a little deeper into Hooksy's playbook here? Oh, the gamble. They have to get aggressive to find out where this bomb is going. It is going B. There's three in A main. It looks like Monty are going to make a move. Nexa, even a kill here uh, is big information for, Mon uh, for G2, but Monty clear him hard. He has no idea that three players have just crept through the water. Hooksy turns around. Oh, this is awkward for Hooksy. This is the bomb on his back, and while Nico could offer up assistance for mid, it's really on Hooksy holding the line, and that's where the AWP meets him. That's where the AWP gets the bomb away from G2. What? And as more players drop in, in. It's pigeon shooting for Waro 2K. Not another off the AWP. He will eventually get silenced, but it leaves G2 with nothing. 15 seconds walking into a stack. Hunter tries to lead the charge, but he's cut down. And Monacy will be silenced. There's the round, and it comes from the captain of Monty. Swinging out through main with that orb, barreling down on G2. A little bit more confidence, a little bit more aggression. And that could be their way in. Yeah, and that's it. all we've been begging for for Monty this entire game, right? Just a play, a sign of confidence, a position they can fight and, you know, not lose a 50-50 uh, duel and then save their four guns. They make a play and they win the round. Back in the game for now. And you saw the frustration set in there for Hooksy. It felt like he did get kind of hung out to dry down in water. Yeah. Didn't have the support. Nico even dropped him back, turned, worried about the peak from dark. And so that one, that one hurts because you get left in a very vulnerable position and it's a position a G2 zone making once they lose that main control. I love this call. They're just going back to a basic exec. They're just going to hit that A site. They know Demka has still been a problem uh, for Monty on this defense. So G2 just want to barrel in with five players. Not being expected right now for Monty. Waro is on a rotation, but there's still a th three strong B hold. G2 throw everything in. But they still go quiet. The second barrage is when they commit. And all firing off early isn't ideal. Now they know there's two players inside of the side. But Monty keep oh. pulling bodies in. More moving over. 4v5. Last time we saw Monty save here. But this time they're right there. They want to get involved. They want to try fight for this. And they don't like what they see. G2 with the reply. A swift uppercut. Knocks Monty out of the round. As Demka battles back from the heavens. A brief glimmer of hope, swiftly extinguished by Nico. It's now only Demka, his position known about, and a 1v3 to embark upon, and this is a round that he can't even attempt. G2 have slowed at the perfect time in these rounds, it feels like. You know, when they get a 5v4, they stop, they make sure the Monty aren't flanking from B long or making moves out through canals. And right there in the Four on two, which seems safe, but isn't guaranteed. They don't plant, they keep guns up. They make sure Monty are moving back in and they get the kill that forces Demka out of the site. This time he at least gets two, but it's still not enough as his entire team crumble around him. And this more so feels like a repeat of Nuke, that T side, that 6-0 lead. Monty get on the board, G2 break it. And they just keep on running away with that game. They are looking to do the same here in the decider map. Vertigo can be written off and forgotten about if G2 return to dominant form and fashion here on Anubis. Yeah, and you know, one of the things we said coming into this series was that G2 are a team with a fire lit beneath them with a legacy in Katowice, one where they often have their hot starts to the year. They're the reigning champs. They're the ones with everything to play for. And it felt like that fired them up back on Nuke. Then the pressure gets to them and it flips around by the time we get to Vertigo.
But here in crunch time, in the third map, the map that really matters, they deliver a stellar game to open up. And for Monty, time is running out to get excited about a comeback here. They've been playing from behind throughout. Whether that's man advantages, whether that's the round count, the weaponry they bring forward, they have been constantly on the back foot. And we don't have that hero piece. We don't have that hero player yet. Sundar Young dead in middle. Demka tries his best to hold the line, but it's going to come down to Waro. It was him delivering that double down in water that made the one round that Monty have possible. But you need a repeat of that now. But Krasnow still a ways out. Even this retake is slow to make a move. Bro is trying something here around the smoke at stairs. But he tapers that aggression Ooh. right till Krasnow arrives. And good spray to open the badge. Not, not a bad chance. You've got to capitalize on these. You haven't had many of them so far, but it's a quick tap from Hooksy. Okay. And the follow-up. Hooksy wow. nails shot off the shot. And it's the captain getting loud, standing to his feet, standing to attention. A commanding lead for G2 as Hooksy puts up three to defend that bomb plant and to defend this strong start from the G2 squad. Yeah, he was never brought here to frag out in the server, but he's had a good series today. He's had some crucial rounds. He's doing the same on Nuke, but now pulling up essentially a 1v3 as Monacy's tucked behind the pillar. He kills everyone on that retake, and Monacy feel like, uh, uh, Monty feel like they cannot catch a break. G2, an unstoppable force now. I mean, now you get into Hooksy's playground, right? These sort of, these sort of momentum-based calls where they're riding the high of the winds. He can play with the pace of the game. This is where Hooksy does his best work. This is where he feels the most comfortable. G2 are one of the most exciting to te teams to watch when they're up, when they're in control, when they're leading. Momentum-based CS. And look at the punches they're throwing at Monty. Another confident mid-take where no one can stop them in their stride. A split into the A site. Krasnod, great timing, but it might not matter if all these entries continue to flood in. And it looks like they will. Demka's locked out of heaven, buying time for the flank. It's denied immediately. And Waro can't justify walking into Monacy's orb with his own. It must be another save. This late in the game, these are inconsequential. And this half feels unsalvageable for Monty. Try as they might. G2, another dominant, confident, five alive round. And that confidence that you saw, you know, from Taz stood behind the boys early on in his screams ever since the pistol. His kind of rally cry to bring everyone on side is now exuded by the rest of the roster. And you can still hear him yelling away. He does not want them to let Monty breathe. And right now they are choking. They are asphyxiating. There is no air left for Monty. No room to breathe. And every time I use in the first half, that is never a good sign. And even when you cut to the player cams, it is such vibes to that opening map where Monty just looked out of it, just looked deflated. The one man who still looks determined for the Monty squad, still has something to prove is Waro. You see him talking away there in the player cams. But even he has had so many missed shots, right? He's been on heaven on at least two of these eight hits if not more, and the shots that you expect Warrior to hit, those fast, flashy flicks, they've been nowhere. Hooksy's been entering him for crying out loud. You can see that Waro still wants to be that hero to bring them in. He tried his hand at the mid-peak there, but is put off by the util. Waro still has that point to prove. And this is a map where CTAWP has options to find opening kills, but G2 have not been giving them away. They've been using Util very well in middle, the Molotovs towards door. They've been smoking dark every single round. There's not really a route that Waro can take with an AWP. He's been in the right place on the executes, but as I said, to minimal result. Another mid-take for G2. 
punish push perhaps by Monty. They look aggressively towards B main. They won't commit though. Looks like we might get another one of these dark walks out of Monty. I think they like that timing they hit the last time they attempted it on the four spy. And Hooksy just heard the AWP there, so he won't re-peek it, which actually gives room for Krasnow to get close. They're gonna crunch mid together. This is Nico dead into Doorknob. He takes one with him. Hunter helps out. Krasnow on the big flank, and they're mur murdering G2 right now. Finally, a 2v2. It's as good as it's gonna get for Monty. Are you ready for Waro? Wanted to get involved at the start of this round, but another missed shot sails past Monacy. And when it's Monacy, you're up against, you don't get many of those. You don't get many misses. He will punish you. So as Waro backs up to main, tries to retake this angle, the site is conceded, but Waro can still harass. 2v2 settles, and Monacy goes looking for his AWP counterpart back at main. This fight decides the round, and with Waro winning it, it's gonna fall under the shoulders of Nexa, but he's low on health, low on chances, deals with that first man in. Can Demka finish what Waro started? Yes, he can. And so a much needed round for Monty. Three kills off the back of Demka as he rotates in to pick up that clutch. Impressive that he's the one coming back into this game when he was 0-6 in A main, when he was a liability, G2 were just pounding him on those A hits, and Demka now has somehow risen to, the, risen to the top of the team. It still needs to be so much more scrambling for a third round of the half. G2, whatever they do, it's plenty on this T side. But they still don't want to let Monty back in. A close clutch for Nexa. Monty with everything to play with in this last round. Once again, it's this dark aggression. G2 have got to be aware that this is something Monty are looking to pull. They fell prey to it that round. They've seen it in many rounds gone by. A couple of flashes to try and set Nexa up over in May, but it's good blocking you till they blow the smoke open. They fight through dark. And so now Hooksy relegated to the sidelines here in the last round of the half. giving time for Monacy to find a pick here. Him and Nico facing off together, but Monty have been given an opportunity by that opening kill. They're not going to squander it. It's going to come down to Waro again. He's got to hit these. There's been too many misses in this map for Waro. He's not a player you expect to see lose these opportunities, but they're right in front of him now. Flashes are going to be key for Monacy. He's got two to send. Util reigns in. And it should become obvious to Monty that this is the A play. Monacy still holding on to the back line. And with Monty, they've got more players behind than they do moving in for this retake. This is very slow in what is an obvious A take out of G2. They haven't been down on it yet, but these two players inside of the site withstand the initial pressure. Nico bought out by the Waro 2K or This one is spiraling from the G2 squad, and Monacy is overran. Monty chained together two rounds at the end of the half. That leaves them with three. Will that be enough? Hey guys, we're back today with another demo review, and we're here with Monazi. Hello everyone. It's always nice to look at pistol rounds first, just because mm -hmm. they're funny. They're funny, yeah. I mean, we have some uh, special pistol. Unfortunately, they went B, but I think if they would come on A, we would trap them. Here I'm staying 
Like, I have, a, I have a good position because I can see Shadow first. First of all, if they rush, I can hear them and I can ask for the flash from Exa. He can flash first, I can kill 1-2, after he's smoking Insta. Uh, it's pretty good trap on A if they go A, but if they go B, obviously we play retake. Are you letting him go first so you can just bait him? I mean, usually, like, for example, against Navi, we play the same pistol and I went first, but yeah. it just depends on the situation. I mean, here it's gonna happen something magic, I'm just gonna defuse. 10 seconds. 10 seconds diffuse? Yeah. <laughs> did your teammate, uh, you had two smokes, right? One smoke for the bomb, one smoke for yeah, main? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did your teammate have a kit like right next to the body? I think, no, I think we didn't have kit. Actually, this is, this round is gonna be good. Like, I asked Nexa to buy HE, and uh, I'm asking Nexa to nade stairs, so I can pick with a nade. So, for this guy on, yeah. yeah. You see, so Hatcher get, getting some damage with the yeah. nade, and I'm killing him with them first. So he didn't expect me to go through the smoke because they smoked cave in the middle. Yeah, this this is not the usual smoke that people are throwing, not the common one. Usually the smoke will land at the doorway, but yeah. there's landed deep inside, yeah. so it allows you to peek this guy with the yeah. with the HE. Yeah, and I think I just knew because we played, and I just remember they're smoking this deep one, and I just wanted to pick K for the HE and uh, catch on mistake. I think th this is the last round I'm playing with them for, and I will And just then you're hopping up, yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, oh, Nico, man, I didn't see it. Uh, no, we, we almost... Lose the Glocks? Yeah, look what I'm gonna do now. Don't you, don't do the same. Don't <laughs> do the same. You have your kill. You have the good position. You have the crossfire with your teammates here. If they come up, they die. This is the mistake that, that new newbies are doing. Me and Nico. Yeah. Going for ecos. Let's go. I'm gonna open now. I think I will start an A. Or I'm gonna pick pop actually. Yeah, I'm gonna pick pop. If you have a spawn, does that usually take priority over? I think I should go here or there because I think this is where they're going. I think it depends on the round what we want, what, what we want to do. But here is gonna be a really good call. We're gonna push B because I was in a really good spot on flowers. We call it flowers. Yeah. And I'm gonna first of all I'm checking this position because usually people are st standing there and it's really good kill for opper because not not a lot of oppers are thinking picking this angle. They usually swing with the flash. I'm gonna nade connect. I'm gonna rotate towards CT Insta towards A. And we will have stuck because we have so much info from Rasmus. It looks like it is really good for being aggressive, clearing out spaces so that you can shift and, and play three people to defend the site. Yeah, this map you cannot just stay passive every time and you have to be always uh, proactive, you know. G2 had Monty in a chokehold throughout that first half, but there was something to go off of for the Monty squad. Right at the end, they piece it together. Some aggression through Dark, some withstanding of those a site hits. Sees Monty get out with three. It is not a lot to play with, and it puts tremendous weight on this pistol round right now. The pressure is high from the get-go as G2 could look to close this out here and now with a win in the pistol. And a completely whiff smoke doesn't make things any easier. That was for the B side, but instead they're just going to have to pop through with pistols. Hunter's here to make a multi-kill happen, but he can't find the first. Explosion into the site for Monty and only the captain of G2 in tow. Monty need this as their lifeline. If they were ever going to get back in to this series, if they were ever going to stand the chance of longing it out versus G2, it hinges on winning this pistol. They get to a good start in spite of the miss smoke, but now they've got to withstand this retake. It's not strong. Nico's head's on a swivel, and it's down to the 1v1. Nexa, tap on that bomb. Demka taps him out over the smoke at main. And so the pistol round falls the way of Monty. That lifeline has been extended to them. And now they've got to grasp it with both hands and not let go. Yeah, Demko's recovery in this game, in this map specifically, is nothing short of impressive. 0 and 6, a liability in the first half, still top of the team, while SDY goes quiet. The stars of Monty, not necessarily anywhere to be seen, but Demko's filling the void. We'll have to see if they can use that to build back into the T side. We saw how favorable it is, as G2 gave us a masterclass in the first half. They're going to pop mid with a flash delayed. Monty, nowhere near a full commitment. Maybe a couple of casualties in mid, but that's all they'll suffer if that. Back 10 comes swinging. AK's there to soften the blow, and it's easily done as Monty should be able to find this round with three up. It's all about the rebuy for G2.
And it's going to be nice to compare the CT side, see how the, you know, passive CT hold for Monty in the first few rounds compares to G2 and whether they want to make those same mistakes or if they'll be far more active at the start of this half. I certainly hope so. Nico's just trying to maximize what they take out of the round. He knows that guns were dropped in middle. And so that's the object of his desire. But Monty are aware of this. Bro is still floating around the mid lanes and should be good for this final kill. So there's that conversion. They stick the landing on it. We saw LMBT giving some attention to some Dai Young, who has had a really rough go at it in this third map. But a smile crept onto his face when they won the pistol. He knows that that's given them a second chance here. Still a gap between these teams, but a gap that can disappear quickly if Monty starts streaking rounds together. Yeah, their playbook is not small. As I said, coming into this game, this is their most played map of last year. This is their highest win percentage across that year, 74%. It's a massive amount of time and experience to pull back on here for Monty. G2 cannot get ahead of themselves with a lead. These games can close so quickly in MR12. Nice XX of Molly into main. He's going to force Krasnos utility. He still survives. G2 with a smoke in their face. Can't push off the back of it. Looked like they wanted to boost there, but either way, Monty abort this position. Hit the ejection button. They will recommit later, but look at G2 stack already. This is a yeah. perfect setup here for G2 CT side. Three players in the site. Honestly responsible for middle, but even that's had a bit of a timer. He can't withstand it for long. Instead, it's this main push that they try to reel in. Nico still oh. here and still fighting forward. Locks down that bomb back in main. And this first rifle round for Monty is now in dire straits. It's left to Bro, and they know where he is. They've got him boxed in, and he doesn't have that bomb to play with. A great performance from this guy back on Vertigo, but expecting him to pull a round off like this is unthinkable. Blocked at main, flanked through middle. There is nothing available to Bro here, and he knows it. G2 have collapsed down upon this bomb. They've put a wall up, and Bro cannot break through. Just the one kill to Hooksy, and that is all that will be afforded to him as G2 starts strong with the rifles. An immediate read from Hooksy and the rest of the gang as they stack up strong on A and they stack right. That is a feel-good moment for the opening round of your CT side. And no one better than Nico to find those kills as well. Nexus sets him up by swinging wide, and Nico plays right beside him. He finds three kills off of the A1S spray. Fantastic work. Final bullet frag drops the bomb. It's what we needed from Nico. We need him in fighting form after a dismal beginning to this tournament. 14 and 8, a solid decider map in a must-win series that doesn't even progress you to the spot egg. It only eliminates Monty and drags G2 one step closer to that heralded arena. Nice angle. Like damage done, a nade to follow, Bro's in trouble. Hunter's getting run down as well as Tech-9 can be terrifying up close. The pressure put through the smoke. Monty can't explode yet. With Molly's down, it will force them out. They run before they blew. Monacy in the middle of the open, only good for one. This is getting awfully close right now. But Nico comes in again and saves the day. 11 rounds for G2. Nico, multi-kill madness, back to back. Putting G2 in his backpack. Uh, these, are the, these are the performances from Nico that G2 have been missing, right? And it's reassuring to see when the pressure's on, when the situation calls for it, Nico is able to deliver this because he's looked uh, rough across the last few days. He's looked rough for a little while since the move, but man, like, Knowing that he still has this in his back pocket, knowing that he can deliver these, these key multi-kills in key moments for the G2 squad might make all the difference here. Hasn't been a super dependable piece. When it really matters, the record will show Nico was there. He withstood the Monty aggression.
and he delivered 4G2. And so in the same way, the pistol almost decided the outcome of this series. That last round was all the same. Monty were all in. They put everything on the line in that last round. And with it going against them, this just might herald in the close for Monty. Nico a chance to put some extra flair on it in this round as he will get face down in mid, but it's only the Glocks to worry about. In fact, they were even ecoing at this point of the game. Screams, desperation for Monty. They want a rifle round. Nico will send them there. Four more for Nico. 21 and eight. The champions of last year's Katowice are back and they are trying to get there again. It's a long road, even today. But Vertigo can be forgotten about if G2 can just close this out now. Confident display on their map pick and on the decider. Anubis might be quick. And that's what G2 need. I mean, you even see that the celebrations are a little more muted now. They know they're in full control of this game. It's just about finishing what they started. They've got to conserve energy. They've got to be ready to play later today. We could get that Snags v Taz matchup. Or we see G2 face Heroic, a team they've already been able to best. Oh, that's a trade. Nothing you can do but die. And that's as Monty were grouping on this B bomb site for the final execute. This could be it. G2, two players in position. Monacy will have to rotate with that AWP. Monty smoked at the worst possible timing. And now they're scared, now they're paranoid, holding the flank, checking T-spawn. Monty don't know where to look. G2 could be anywhere. And with noise being made, look at G2 adjust, rotate, move players back round. He could get aggressive and a kill found yet again. And G2 can feel it. They can feel that they've done enough here. They've been in the heads of Monty throughout Anubis. They've had star-studded performances from this three-man core that you want to see deliver for the G2 squad. And Nico here, by the time the third map has rolled around, he has awoken. Finally landing in Katowice and right when G2 demand it. Next, uh, Stella holds over towards A, but he is bested immediately. Nico is still in the round, and as long as his name is up on the screen, as long as when you hit tab, you never feel safe. Not with the game he's having. But G2, respectful here. Very respectful at that. They hang on to the extremities and they might just give this one over to Monty. They're going to let them have it. They're playing the long game. They've got all these rounds to play with, so why not use them? And they're even looking to do damage on the exits. Monty, getting out of the sight here will not be free. You don't want to lose everyone. You don't want everyone to fall. Hooksy trying to maximize that damage. Can't hold on, but Monacy can. And so those guns are kicked to the wayside. Monty win the round. But they lose so much on the exit. And that just tees up G2 for the choke slab, for the finisher, for the final knockout punch. All that damage on the way forces Mac 10s, Galil's lack of util. And so G2, it's not the most exciting finish, but it's the perfect route to it. I mean, this is so, they feel so conf confident in their long game here. Yeah. They didn't want to make the desperate 3v3 last second retake happen. They want this to be orchestrated. They want this to be put together. They want to be in full control. Losing that retake just drags this game on longer. G2 don't want to waste time. They need to conserve that energy for later on. They need to make this clean. And so a full buy here will be the perfect remedy 
After that save, Monty executing A and Nico and Nexus side yeah. by side. This time, that's the change, isn't it? Nico was out of position in that last retake. This Whoa. time, he is burnt to a crisp from this util. If he can get anything from this HP, from this angle, he's done what he had to do in the round. Now it's Nexus. Now it's Monacy. And that AWP beats out from the heavens. And it beats back Monty. G2, hold on. And they get through this third map with their heads held high. One more best of three between G2 and that run into the spot deck. And they show us exactly what we needed to see to inspire confidence in this roster. Yeah, back.